spiritual life was about responsibility. And the earth was the mother. And at some point in the evolution of the human beings, another perception of reality appeared. And this perception of reality, it took the spirit away from the animals and all of the other things, and it started changing spirit into human form, the gods and the goddesses. So at some point in the evolution, see, it started to take the way the people prayed. But it has to do with iron and bronze and all these things being, being starting to become mined. So it's like it kind of evolved in this kind of a way. It's like, see, in a way, religion emerged, in it, but it was like a mining tool for the technologic reality that was manifesting itself through industrialization. But it became almost like a tool, see, because you got to go to the center of where the human being is because all human beings want to know where we come from and where we're going, what's our purpose. So you've got to go there if you're going to mess with them. You have to go there to the very beginnings. The beginnings and the heart of the spiritual realities. So the God thing evolved, the religious thing that changed the creation story from being a creation story to where there was a new story, and this new story was that there was a male dominator God removed from the earth who owned everything because he made it. So he owned it. All right, now, at this point, in our common collective genetic ancestral memory, every one of our relations back in that time rejected this because life worked for them because the earth was the mother and the sky was the father, it's like the great spirit, the spirits, everything, it worked for them. They maintained a balance, they knew who they were, they knew what their purpose was, they knew their relationship to power, they knew everything about their lives, so it worked for them. But they were forced to accept this other perceptional reality through violence and terror and aggression. Same thing happened to the Indians here by the descendants of the tribes of Europe, happened to the tribes of Europe and their descendants. That's why they behaved the way they did when they got here. And this is where I think sexism comes from. I think it comes from our relationship to the earth. See, I think sexism was one of the mining tools because when you're going to convince all of the human beings in whatever tribes that they're in, as you come into contact with them, you have to turn them against the earth to promote this male god thing to alter the perceptional reality. So this is where sexism came. It came as a way because, see, as long as the people considered themselves to be the children of the earth and a part of the earth, they would not plunder the earth. They would not aid and abet or accept the plundering of the earth because the earth is their mother. See, so that's why sexism came in as a way because in order to attack the earth amongst the human beings they came into contact with, they had to attack their perceptional reality about the woman in relationship to the earth and life. So sexism, so it became, it was like a mining tool to help turn us against the earth and make the earth available for plunder. So in order to have all this experience get dumped down in our ancestral past because it was all like what I'm saying is this mining process. As the technology grew, the ways and methods of mining remain the same, and it's almost like a predatory behavior. They never, the behavior pattern never really changes itself. What the behavior pattern does is it just outlasts the generations. So after five generations are gone, the behavior pattern can be as predatory as it ever was, like medieval civil, uh, Europe. The behavior pattern can be as aggressive as it ever was, because after five generations, who's going to remember what was there? The terminology changes, the technology changes. So it's like there's this thing that just kind of bent to me, right? That's a part of this civilization that just, it just kind of re-manifests itself, but the continual thing is it eats our spirit to me, it uses, converts, feeds off of us in some kind of a way. See, so this is why it's important to separate everybody from any ancestral understandings and teachings because see, they don't want anybody to know this. So everybody thinks they got hope. And the thing continues to spread because you women, Look at what the women's suffrage was in, in the 1800s. So now you have the right to vote and you made certain little gains, but see, it's still the same war. And the concessions are given very slowly. And it's, it's this way with labor, it's this way with all of the things. But anyway, it's behavior pattern basically remains the same. And it's means of conducting its behavior pattern, that's what really changes. 
and and the generation of people that it gets conducted on this changes but in order for all this stuff to happen they have to neutralize our intelligence they have to create a confusion in our own perceptual reality so somewhere in each and every one of us there's a collective genetic memory that goes way back to the beginning of the original dream the beginning of our stories and our relationship to power in reality is connected to us understanding that that is there but we're in a technologic perception of reality that does not want us to understand that from earth from water
They say having two heads is better than one, but I keep it real simple, crazy, and fun. Chin up, chin up, hands down, deep in my pocket, overcrowded thoughts running down the pipe, dream, pushing, challenging, my self-esteem, holding my head, swaying back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, psychedelic emotion, I am an ocean, waves over my warm touch, taste my love potion, push on me, feel it, feel it, hold me under, hold me under, Gemini, who am I? Gemini, who am I? Sweetest one you've ever known, big hips, brown skin, I'm grown. Gemini, Gemini, don't forget to challenge me, smart as hell, rebellious, just let me be. No acting like a lady, this shit's gone crazy. Can't help but talk behind your back, you know it's cause I'm always off track. I can't help it, it's the way that I am. Dreaming of threesomes, my heart booms, I ignite drums. Acting childlike, provoke me, I'm dreamlike. Two snakes wrapped in a tree, dangerous disposition. I be, I be, love for strong, never mean no wrong. Two sides of every story, walking my path to my territory. Growing in stages and pages and pages and pages. Gemini so sweet, oh so contagious. Addiction to the vanity, I'm hooked. Never overlook my sanity. Woman of the house, I keep a mother toes. Wet dreams of alchemy in the sacred flow. In the sacred flow. Charming personality, extrovert, get lost in my own head. Pull me close, I love to flirt. Mirror my projections, I'm my worst enemy. Gemini magician, leaving a beautiful legacy. Leaving a beautiful legacy. Sexual, sensual, loving orgasms. Unrealistic, surrealist, royalist, indigenous theorist. Drip rain water down my chest. Love. Sex, I feel blessed. Loving men appreciating women. Women appreciating men. Fluidity of human beings. Amen. Drinks up my sleeve. Cathartic human energies. Running through my braid. Brown queen of spades. Raid my cave. I am your slave. Holding up both hands. Raise. Voici mon tambour. C'est l'esprit d'un vieux caribou qui vit parmi nous. Quand vous entendez le son du tambour, dites-vous bien, c'est l'Indien. Il est toujours là. Le son du tambour, c'est le son de la vie. C'est le cœur qui bat. Mmh. Oh.
bout de nec. Quand j'étais petite fille, j'avais deux amis. faisait des paniers et elle m'aimait. Théo, lui, il me racontait l'histoire des Abenaki. C'était le retour de la chasse. Ça chantait, ça dansait. 